My first ever brand was a clothing brand, so like I'd be lying if I said I knew I would ever end up building brands. I just knew I wanted to do my own thing. I've been in the fucking e-com game for like six, seven years now and hopefully have some scars to back it up. So three million pounds in sales, unfulfilled? I grew that brand way too quick. A supplier went bankrupt on me, loads of money disappeared. I then couldn't fulfill three million quid's worth of orders. It became a social media shitstorm. The business went from having seven figures in the bank to being fucking insolvent in about four months, which not many people know what that even means. I could get PTSD speaking about this. I think that's the single most stressful thing anyone could go through other than terminal illness or death, honestly. I don't know, there's like a dark side to me, I think. What's the dark side? Yes, people, so I've been working on a free community Discord. I'm going to be doing weekly coaching calls for free, so you can join, ask any question you want about e-com. But this is a great opportunity for you to meet some great people. There's going to be seven to eight figure entrepreneurs in there, and the long-term plan for this community is going to be crazy. Click the link, and it is completely free. See you there. And yes, people, so today we've got a special guest on, Matt, Matt Kelly. How's it going? It's good, man. Founder of Space Goods, and I would say a serial e-com entrepreneur, to be fair. Killing yeah, definitely. It. Fully killing it. Don't know it. about killing it, but definitely serial. I would say doing it pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to, yeah, just who are you and what do you do, bro? Fuck. I, bro, I feel like I have... my quick intro. Oh, and yeah, Andy. Andy. <laughs> are you co-hosting? I've not even yeah. had an intro to this guy. He's co-hosting. He's top agency, absolutely smashing it. He's doing good. Doing good. But yeah, yeah so who are you and what do you do, bro? I literally gave this fucking story to a potential investor about two hours ago. I feel like I tell my story all the fucking time and it's very well documented. I guess in summary, I've been in the fucking e-com game for like six, seven years now, like properly for like five years, like full time. Done a bunch of shit. Definitely a lot of highs, a lot of lows, probably more than most people I reckon. Certainly been more public about my lows and losses and shit. But I think I've finally got some life experience. That's good. I feel like I've got a great network in the space. Um, obviously started my pod like, year and a bit ago, which I still don't take seriously enough, but it's very much a side thing. Um, but yeah, I would like to think I'm probably one of the more honest people in the space um, and hopefully have some scars to back it up, which I don't think many people do. I know there's a lot of smoke and mirrors on social media oh, these mate, days, particularly crazy. Twitter recently, in my opinion. Yeah, um, for sure. And yeah, I'm just fucking figuring it out. Don't claim to be an expert or anything. I guess I'm quite good at building brands, particularly zero to one. That's where I'm best at. I think now I'm in a position where I'm trying to build something for the longer term. I think a lot of people are chasing very quick wins when they get into like entrepreneurship, e-com especially. Yeah. And I think you can get a lot of quick wins, you know, drop shipping. I was doing half a million a month when I was drop shipping, living in Bali when I was 22, printing easy money, I guess. Probably spent most of it on bullshit in hindsight. Yeah. Didn't invest it very well. Really? But now just, yeah, trying to build a hundred million pound brand, which everyone says, but I feel like now I'm in a position where I could potentially do that. I've got investors that have done that. I have an, a decent amount of experience getting to like low eight figures in revenue previously yeah, before I fucked it up. Um, and yeah. What was it like? So you said about the quick money. Obviously, you started with the quick money. What was it? Well, like? I actually didn't. It's funny. Didn't. So oh, yeah. I, I, well, I say I didn't. My first ever brand was a clothing brand. So like I was on Shopify in like 2014. I say brand. By brand, I mean a fucking white t-shirt with, with the logo. Everyone does. But it was, I was trying to build a brand. Yeah. I didn't actually know what dropshipping was until about two years of selling my own product that I had stock for. Same as me, bro. I was working in Waitrose and then John Lewis yeah. in 2015, back when I was 19. Like, just standard, standard fucking U UK, middle class yeah, UK yeah, setup. Like, don't come from money at all. I had a fucking shit job, went to uni and was doing a bunch of stuff. And then I discovered dropshipping in like 20... 16, late 2016, back when Facebook ads were about a tenth of the price. Courses or Facebook groups. Fair. Facebook groups, yeah. And it's one of those things, I, I can't actually properly remember how I even got into stuff. But I, I used to just draw logos. That was my very first okay. foot into the door of broad entrepreneurship. But I'd be lying if I said I knew I would ever end up building brands. I just knew I wanted to do my own thing. I Same knew when I went to uni that I would never finish. So you I went to didn't, uni? Yeah, I went to uni twice. So I dropped out, then went back, then dropped out again. Different uni? No, same uni, Northumbria. So you dropped out? The shit one in Newcastle. So a bit indecisive then? Oh yeah, I think only in the past like six months has my brain fully formed maybe <laughs> to like, I'm very, I was very sporadic and random when I was younger and I think it's a good and bad thing. Exactly the same as me. Like I'm not one of these people and I've got mates that I'm maybe not jealous but envious of that figured out their thing when they were 19 and now they're 25 or whatever and they've had six years on one thing. 
and that pays off. Whereas I, I just wasn't that. I've always been in the e-commerce space broadly, but I came at it from a design perspective. So I just wanted to like, draw logos. You start something, move to the next. But how do the logos go into like e-commerce? So I would draw random logos, and then I discovered that you could make a clothing brand, which is what everyone starts with, yeah, right? Yeah, and then I put this shitty logo of this brand called Gentry Club, which was like the the group name I gave my mates in sixth form. We're going back that far. What did it mean? I don't even know, but it, everyone ripped the shit out of me. I sold like none, bought a load of white, like gilding t-shirts with an embroidered logo yeah, I'm talking yeah. about. One so that was my first. UK suppliers. Yeah, 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 it was fucked. It was like way before anyone was talking about D to C and Econ being like this thing. So yeah, logos were the first thing. Then I got into, I mean, I've covered the full story on plenty of podcasts. Yeah, so I, I won't bore people, know. but yeah. I guess I was very random and chopped and changed a lot and that was just my so, character. Yeah, but what, so what was the main driving factor for you to quit uni? Because obviously you say you have up and downs. What was like the driving factor? Yeah, like I think when I was 10 years old, I knew I, I would be an entrepreneur. It's probably another yeah, word for it then. Same as me. Like literally, yeah. like, that is the honest truth. It wasn't because some fucking guru made a video and I bought their course, which probably plenty of people are now. <laughs> and there's it's nothing wrong with that. But I feel like that's maybe a less sincere way, a less authentic way of doing things because... I think a lot of people now are trying to be the next Iman Gazi, be the next Sebastian Georgiou, and nothing wrong with that, but I think those people have less of a genuine desire to do their own thing. They just see like well, the highlight reel. With and their visions to make money. I feel yeah, like and they're emulating someone else, which long term is never going to work, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Because like, the most impressive people I've ever met, plenty of which are fortunately my friends now, have always just done their own thing. Like Fred, who runs Sanucci, is one example I'm yeah, thinking I of. I saw that. I remember when I first saw his brand, though. He still won't come on the pod. Yeah, the first time I saw him, I, I'm not going to lie, I was like, I hate that name. I hate that name, but he smashed it. Yeah, he smashed and it. Absolutely smashed it. And then, I, I'm going to say, they must be surpassing Crafted in the long term, I would say. That'd be my bet. I believe so, yeah. That'd be my bet. Sorry, Crafted. That'd definitely be my bet. But yeah, you, the, the group of friends you hang around with seem like they're absolutely killing it, bro. How did, how did you manage to network in that sort of thing? It's the most common question I ever get is how do you build a network? And I've never done it intention. I've never thought about it. I've just, yeah. I didn't know anyone special. when I was younger. So I went to some fucking event in Singapore. Again, I've talked about this in all these pods. Met a few people, then I met a few other people. And then I guess you ultimately end up gravitating towards people at a similar level to you, whether that's experience or scale or sort of businesses they're running. I don't know, just being a... Decent bloke. Is there, yeah, facts. Is there anyone? It's being yourself. Is there anyone from Bali um, that you still talk to from like your original trips and stuff? Yeah, one of them I'm staying in a villa with next week. Who I That's met it. in Body Factory this morning for the first time in like two years. That was okay. like a little fucking romance meetup. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah, it's good. That's it, man. He's got a long-term girlfriend now, so it's very well, different to my room. Living in Bali. Uh, he's not living in Bali. Just traveling together and shit. So. How do you nowadays connect with those people that are playing at like an eight-figure yearly level or exited a brand for eight, figure, eight figures? Because I've noticed at this point they don't even want to talk about business because they, they play through it, right? Mm. And all the other people are coming to them and asking them business questions, they get kind of annoyed by it. So are you more cool with them on a friendship level or do you approach them with a kind of like business mindset? Or how does this look like? Yeah, I think I've got a lot of mates around like my sort of age, a bit younger, a bit older, a similar sort of experience level, like Fred, Jack, who I'm living with, Adam, who I'm now living with, a bunch of other guys that people probably see me on social media with. But I think the more interesting and more recent people I've managed to network with is like investors in my brand in the past year or so. It's a guy called Jimmy. He's one good example. He's in his mid-30s now. Built and sold a massive business, which is what everyone's trying to do. Been in the game like 15 years. So with him, for example... I just made the first pod, he watched the pod, I then asked him to come on the pod and he said, oh, I, li I like the story, let's get a coffee. And then we just became mates. Hmm. And then we ended up fucking going out to Marbella, sending it together, talking about girls and shit. It was always very just, I mean, just being yourself. Yeah, and yeah. It, but, but you do need some context and substance for people Agreed. to be in, to, to like buy into you. I think just go, <laughs> like I'll get messages all the time, can we go, can we go for a coffee? Oh, like why? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, actually, I actually messaged you to be fair ages ago, bro. But this this one happened a bit natural because I actually had a question, hmm. an important, obviously it's quite a big one, and I was trying to think like who who could I ask? Obviously, all my friends are doing really well as well, but no, no one had been in like the selling the business or exit phase. Hmm. I don't know anyone who's been doing that. So I was like, who the fuck? I remember you had a con consultation link in your bio. So I was like, fuck it. I, I do very few of those, but yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll run it through. Yeah, so we discuss basically like exiting like a dropshipping store which is pretty helpful to be fair 
you actually pushed the decision for me. So. I think it's the right decision. So for sure, for sure, for sure, man, hundred percent. So I know you spoke about it a million times, like the when your first ne- Neon Beach, like how that all ended, etc. Could get PTSD speaking about this. Yeah. So the the, the question was like, because for me, you're gonna bro, put a new a new angle on it. Yeah. So for me, I get super stressed, bro. Like I love business, but I'm up and down, like. Mm super stressed, anxious sometimes, like if there's loads, I'm kind of ADHD, so if there's loads of things going on, like it's just completely hard. So how, how did you deal with it mentally? Well, I didn't deal with it mentally very well. Okay. Um, I think that's the single most stressful thing anyone could go through other than terminal illness or death, honestly. Like it was actually so bad. I reckon I've underplayed it on podcasts. So for people that don't understand, just a quick brief of like what, what it is. The situation yes yeah, so very brief I, I grew that brand way too quick a supplier went bankrupt on me loads of money disappeared I then couldn't fulfill three million quid's worth of orders it became a social media shitstorm. the business went from having seven figures in the bank to being fucking insolvent in about four months which not many people know what that even means it means you owe more than you have um, and how do you solve that situation then? Get, got bought out put the business into Who's administration businesses like that? private Absolutely. equity funds and, yeah. and, and what did they see in the company? Well, they saw me and they saw a brand that had just fucked up, I guess. Okay, and um, they saw it as an opportunity. Yeah, and, and I, th- I think a lot of brands in 2020, not just neon brands, had, in, had massive growth. Okay. And then it's not sustainable to a certain extent. Like, I know brands that are still around doing well, but like 2021 was much worse than 2020, like for almost everyone I know. And certainly 2022. Um, but I also think that niche of product, that was the quickest growth thing I've ever seen, certainly in the UK. Um, but yeah. Yeah, because the UK scene is so small, I feel like. It is so small compared to like America, yeah. Because that's why like on social media, it's literally just you and your mates, I would say pretty much. There's like a couple guys coming up now. Yeah. Like a couple guys on Twitter, but the scene's so small, bro. Like super small. That's yeah, why it's good to see. I think you I often forget like in general how few people are actually in the entrepreneurship space I because everyone. I met with one of my investors the other day like two weeks ago I'd never met him before in person and he said something so stark to me and it stuck with me he said most people don't start businesses because they're sensible you have to be a fucking lunatic to start a business because really? the, the chances of actually succeeding are so small yeah, that's in mad. the long term that's mad that but it's true crazy. like but I, mo- so most me, sensible people would just go and get a job and try and get a high paying job for me I was just like I ain't getting a job yeah because you're a lunatic like every other yeah. entrepreneur ultimately I feel like I get the highs and lows like you. I can remember I was coming out of uni once crying, bro. Called my dad, like, mm. do I quit? Do I not? I was selling jewelry. Same, same as you. Yeah. So my brother said he was, he started selling jewelry online and I skated at the time, like, skate, like, oh, that's party scene. So I was like, I'm going to make the supreme of jewelry, do massive drops, sell like the coolest jewelry. Basically did that throughout uni, but like, I was trying to debate whether to drop out or not, but I actually, I like, stuck it through. Stuck, oh, really? Stuck it through, yeah, yeah. Mm. But that delayed it. Where'd you go? Bristol. Bristol. Russell Group. Yeah. No, no, no. Below. One. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 You don't put that one out straight away. But yeah, that, that was that was good. That was good. That was good. But back to the. So obviously that situation is absolutely crazy, and I feel like most normal people can't like. Comprehend that. In no, it's the single most stressful period of my life. So your side twenty x. So three million. For about for about four months. So three million pounds in sales unfulfilled. Something like that. Uh, go and watch the Frankie Lee pod for the full story on that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but so. yeah, it was, it, was, it was very, very heavy. Okay, so what were the personal characteristics of yourself that helped you get out of it? Because I would say you're out of it. And so would you. What were the personal characteristic traits that got you out of it? I think just persistence. <laughs> I didn't really have another choice. I had to get on with it and fucking solve problems and do what had to be done. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that comes from. But that's why I got into like, I like the idea of running a marathon and shit, which I ended up doing. And because I like, I don't know, there's like a dark side to me, I think. What's the dark side? I've definitely driven more by negative things than positive things. I can agree to that, because for me. I, I don't know where that comes from, whether it's fucking childhood or whatever, but, but do like. You, do you think you tell yourself that now, so you're convincing yourself negativity pushes you? I just think it does. For me, like every time I've had a breakup, my money doubles and I usually get abs yeah well you need to break up again then <laughs> <laughs> I've, bro, I've actually absolutely packed up yeah well so. so my ex-girlfriend the only long-term girlfriend I've ever had who I ended up living with and was with her for 18 months um, 
yeah, that, that bro- I broke up with her like just it was just after. No, it was a few months after that situation, but it was in, in the whole midst of it. Yeah. And I was in severely bad shape compared to what I am now, and it's looking kind of embarrassing back. looking back. I wouldn't say it's embarrassing. Looking For me, back. it was because then I, I just got shredded last summer. I was like, fuck this, and don't know. <laughs> I'd have not looked back. Yeah, fair. Really. What's what's the diet looking like? It's not great out here. I mean, I, I do a lot of calisthenics, a lot of cardio. And genuinely just try and eat decent shit. I think it's pretty simple. Fair, fair, fair. So that's back, how I did it. So back to the girlfriend, do you think that was like a driving factor? Because I feel like when things come crumbling down, it all happens at the same time. Yeah, so when I broke up with her is when I started working on Space Goods. So, I mean, she definitely ain't watching this, but if she is, enjoy. Um, yeah, I think that was the best decision I had on a breaking up with her. I think most people can agree on that, though. Like, if you're breaking up, you either sop and be like a fucking crybaby. I did cry about it. Yeah, I, I regretted it two months later. I wrote a fucking love letter to her that was like 5,000 words. I'm not even afraid to say that. And then three months later, I looked at it and thought, fucking hell, it's weird how time yeah, heals yeah, anything. I, I, I've done shit like that. I'm just life. a romantic guy. I'm either all in or not. It's good. That's good though. There's no in between though. I either don't give a single fuck and I probably break their heart or I fall in love and I want to fucking make a movie about it. And yeah. that's just the way and my brain the, works. That's the vision and creativity you have, I reckon. Yeah. For sure. But, so... So yeah, the long the long term plan of Space Goods. Obviously, that happened. Space Goods was came from that situation. Obviously, that was pretty crazy. Girlfriend broke up. Everything sort of crumbling down. Mm. Regarding Space Goods, did that moment in time give you like a long term vision of like where you can take Space Goods? Yeah. So the idea for that generally came from. I've always been interested in like magic mushrooms and psychedelics, and I know that's illegal, but I believe that's changing well it is changing like look at Australia decriminalised look at certain states in America Canada and I dabbled in that trying to like self-medicate when I felt so shit and not, not just well, like magic mushrooms low doses yeah like microdosing and so on but then also like lion's mane ashwagandha to reduce anxiety all this sort of shit just been interested in nootropics and I just thought well I also have this weird thing where I can't swallow tablets right it's just yeah, I same, don't know where same, that bro. comes from same as me. everyone says it's so like, weird I'm sure it is but I just can't and forth. I just don't need to fix it anymore so I used to unscrew capsules of different nootropics I was stacking okay. and put them into a blend and that's okay. what became like Rainbow Dust V1 right okay. and yeah it's, it's always weird looking back on how you came up with something because you can never you can never be in that position of not having the idea again because now I know about it so I can't look back at when I didn't know about it retrospectively do you know what I mean yeah but yeah the general that was the general idea I wanted to build something that helped me feel better when I was in a shit place but also it just so happened that I felt that was probably the most hot market at the time in terms of I clearly saw mushrooms in general going up I mean they definitely have done in the past year and continue to do there was no brands in the UK doing it how I wanted to do it particularly in the UK which is a fairly small market like you said but and I was like fuck it I think this makes sense for the next thing. And I'm very good at zero to one, so I just came up with the brand and yeah. rolled with it. Do you think the mushroom like fits into like the health niche? Like health, all of that? Yeah, it's massive. I mean, anyone that drinks coffee, I would say is a potential customer, okay. broadly speaking. It's a wellness brand at the end of the day. Um, mushrooms and longer term psilocybin, magic mushrooms, I guess are just the, the base of everything I'm doing with it. So the question is like, obviously it's a daily product. Like, is it, is it normal for humans to consume mushrooms every day? Like on small amounts? Well, it's, it's, not, it's not magic mushrooms in the product. No, let's, yeah, be yeah, not, yeah, let's be clear. Yeah, let's be clear. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely safe. It's just, it's an all-in-one blend. I, I was inspired by like Athletic Greens, Huel, love both those brands, customers of both of them. And I just wanted to create something very simple because all the shit I'd done in the past was so complicated. 200 SKUs, custom yeah. products, a million fucking variations. With this, I just made one product to start with and I have two. But, yeah. How do you see the mushroom industry involved in the next five years, especially with the magic mushrooms? Yeah. I think it's a huge market for microdosing. Yeah. But it could also be a, a market for like therapy with like 100%. proper dosages. Yeah. But I'm not sure if most of people are, re- are ready for it because it's like going really within yourself and taking care of everything that is in your subconscious mind. Uh, I'm not sure how. Hmm. that market gonna evolve but I think microdosing is a huge huge market yeah honestly like I think mushrooms broadly and psychedelics are like the next CBD I think it's 20 years behind I think culturally you know the, like, think about weed 20 years ago it was like a loser in the mum's basement or like a yeah. fucking rapper or some shit 
now it's middle-aged women having CBD drops in a Range Rover, dropping their kids off at private school in London. Like, it's changed so much, and I think it's happening with psychedelics. Like, all these, in the past year, uh, particularly, look at, like, Netflix, How to Change Your Mind, all that documentary, Paul Stamets, all these guys. Just mushrooms broadly, but then specifically magic mushrooms and psychedelics, which includes, like, MDMA, stuff like that as well. Um, obviously, LSD, which is a synthetic, slightly different... But yeah, I think microdosing is what I'm most inter- interested in because I've done it myself and it helps. I mean, there's countless publications and research that basically proves it's better for you than fucking antidepressants. Mm-hmm. But that's a pretty political issue. Um, I used to take antidepressants when I was 19 years old and it fucking, I hated it. And I was like, never again, not doing that shit. It doesn't work for me. My ex-girlfriend used to take loads of antidepressants yet she would do cocaine on the weekend and drink wine three times a week. So it's like... And not exercise. I feel like that's come become so. She's common. just an example, but I feel like that's become. I think it's so an epidemic of crazy. of antidepressants and those sort of drugs, and I'm sure they are genuinely beneficial for some people. But I think it's magic more, mushrooms would be more beneficial. Sure. It's more and just, other things. It's more just a dumb and down. I think like it sort of numbs it, doesn't yeah. solve it. So, and I feel I, like I can say that because I've been on that shit for, and that's my opinion. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. Fair. So yeah. Yeah, the antidepressants. Are pe- pandemic is pretty crazy in the but then also bigger doses like you said there's already startups like there's one called field trip i think they're based in like i think it's america but i also spoke to one where you can pay like 10 grand to go to fucking some amsterdam clinic yeah. it's becoming like this high-end therapy thing and i think the area that i'm trying to play in but it's going to be difficult because honestly if someone said how the fuck do you build a dc psilocybin brand i don't really know right now that's the honest truth yeah. because there's so much fucking red tape but what I'm trying to do is build a brand that's ready for a market that I believe will exist soon. Because right now you have, you can go to Amsterdam and buy truffles legally, which is like a grey area. It's basically mushrooms, it's like yeah. different. It's illegal everywhere else, pretty much. Or you can be a really wealthy person and go and get some clinician to take you through a fucking mushroom trip in a, you know, in a trusted environment and in certain countries. But like, it's obvious that there's, there's going to be like a D2C market in the middle at some point which is like properly branded stuff, easily accessible. There's brands like Hims in America that sell like Viagra door to door basically, you might have seen them. It's like a, a telehealth company, which is kind of in the middle, which is where I might have to go with this longer term in terms of like people have to get a prescription to buy it online rather than just Instagram ads, buy it impulse. Because yeah, yeah. someone could end up taking fucking 50 microdoses, which is then like a massive hero dose. And yeah. that could be problematic because they think they can fly and jump off a building. But I'm not there yet. I don't know. I think I think it's a super interesting market. I know what I'd like to do with it, but in here and now, ultimately, I'm building a supplement brand which doesn't sell psychedelics. Fair obviously. Enough. What's your personal experience on psychedelics? How did it help you? Well, I think microdosing is very subtle. It's also illegal, so I only do it where it's legal, of course. Um, of course. I would actually really like to do... I've never done psychedelics in a controlled environment like a, like a therapeutic I've environment heard about that. I would like to do that I think like like all these guys on these documentaries where they've done it in like a controlled study and it's really helped them overcome like 50 years of trauma and shit I definitely think I have a lot to work through in my mind about the past and shit um, you could probably do it in Bali but then I'm not, not, maybe not in Bali yeah, not anymore nah, not, not in Bali not anymore. in the Netherlands you can definitely do it right yeah, yeah. but yeah be cool to try more why, why do you keep saying you're like working through trauma and if you are working through trauma how are you working on it essentially what's, what's your actively way of working on it well when I say working through trauma I think I, I, I just dwell on the fact that I fucked up the last business a lot okay that's the number one thing that's what I mean I don't mean child abuse or any of that shit <laughs> luckily I didn't Fair experience time. any of that but Is I also just think yeah I'm, I'm just a massive overthinker anyway that's the way my brain works which is probably a blessing and a curse. Same, it is a blessing. Exactly. So it makes me very creative and, and, you know, whatever. But, yeah, I, I'm almost, I'm often jealous of, like, people that can just go to the pub and watch football. Yeah. Like, genuinely. Yeah, I agree. I, f- like, so, fully agree. That's just not me. Because um, the, the, the ideas and the creativity, like, if you're not in a good space, the brain can clog, and then you're just constantly, and for me, I repeat the same shit, like, negative shit, mm. and then your body feels it, for sure, so... Like that, yeah, the ups and downs of business can be super crazy. Like, so yeah, I think that's probably the main thing I've dwelled on the past few years is oh, if I'd done that, I could have, you know, had this outcome. But then, you know, I guess the way to look at it is maybe that was meant to happen to put me in this space to then go and do something much bigger. I truly believe that, all of that. 
I, and I struggle to believe that myself, but that's what other people tell me. You gotta do it, you gotta believe it, because so. I feel like the more you let go, the more it comes to you, for sure. And then, to my opinion on it, if everything comes crashing down, it's like the universe telling you, like, you need to move on, it's time for the next chapter. Like, it all worked out, mm. like, I was in Bristol, I was like driving up to the bridge every day, I'm like, not in like a bad way, like writing on my notepad, fucking crying, bro. Just uni, business, mm. what am I fucking doing? Just being young, obviously it's not a problem at the time. But all of that, like, all the friends moving away, trying to hold on to like my old life, but how can you be the person you want to be when you're still living your old life, right? So the un- it's got to change. Like, and the only way it's going to change is if, if the only way to push you is if everything crumbles. I think as well, to be completely honest, <laughs> like I experienced so much I guess what most people would say is success in my early 20s. I think that's corrupted my worldview massively. So much. I had all the money. I had a fucking Ferrari when I was 23, all this shit. I had all the cars I wanted. per year at the time profit, do you reckon, if you're okay with saying that? Probably a million quid. Fair. Maybe a bit less, um, including like drop shipping stuff. But I was also very stupid with it. Um, but most people Yeah, would. I think like, I wouldn't it's hold, funny because everyone in, in the space but just broadly like money Twitter Instagram when you're a fucking young guy in entrepreneurship you want to get the fast car in the penthouse apartment For that's sure. just the truth it's exactly what Egan wants over there. and you don't need that yeah, much money to have that by the way no 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 which gurus won't let you believe but it's true you don't need to make that much money to have that you rent the place finance the car yeah I don't know I think it fries your fucking like dopamine Dope. receptors or some bullshit so to I, an extent so I, I've done I and then the, the flip side of the other thing with that which is probably more poignant even now is I built a circle of people that are definitely 0.01% yeah, yeah. so then I'm comparing myself to them all the time and I've said this to my friends like I, I do that and then I feel like a useless piece of shit yeah but that's even though 99.9% of the people would say can't believe what you've done blah 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 but I don't care about their opinion because yeah, they work in a grad job yeah, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that my twin brother does that but, but I just don't I don't care about his opinion in that way because I want to be you're surrounded I want to be by the, the best you're surrounded by it yeah but if you're going to be the best you need people like that to drive you up so yeah I tweeted about this the other day I'm very self aware like it does it does hurt the ego feeling like I'm the least successful in a small group but I guess ultimately how else are you going to get better okay what is success in your eyes because success isn't just money no it's absolutely not I think ultimately success is I think Andy Frisella said it once and it started with me the progressive realisation of a worthy ideal which just ultimately means yeah, progressively that. achieving what you want to achieve but I think like, in, in, for me I think it's health, wealth, love and happiness like four pillars right so I find myself the happiest like I'm super happy right now work in the house load of mates couple laptops I think freedom is super important yeah that's probably the thing I've always thought about but then ironically I've taken freedom away from myself in ways by like putting myself living in London in the winter when I don't need to shit like that yeah so because I was trying to debate like do I want to live on my own work on a laptop because I think that's such a people don't realise entrepreneurship can be super lonely no it's so you, ter- like, terribly lonely yeah terribly lonely especially if you're overthinking as well so like a lot of people yeah people in that situation like how, how would you tell them to like deal with that and like I think you have to go and meet people doing similar shit with similar ambitions. Yeah, it's literally the single most choice. important thing is yeah, who you hang around with. It's literally, there's nothing else that matters in life if you don't hang around with people that are on a similar journey or on the same page. That doesn't mean they have to be entrepreneurs that want to make no. loads of money. They could be, I don't know, people that want to run marathons or people that fucking like painting pots on a weekend <laughs> or some bullshit. But like, yeah. you have to find people that are doing similar shit. And the reality is, 99% of people that you go to fucking school or uni with you, you were literally only friends because of where you were born by chance. Mate, I and knew so You can have some old friends, and I still do, but most of them I'm not friends with anymore because we have nothing in common. I speak to Why would I be friends with them? Uni. Just because I was born in the same area. I speak to one person from uni. I probably knew, I don't know, a lot of people. So I think, um, I think that's the single most important thing. For sure, for sure. And we're, we're only talking now because of fucking econ, because he wants to get into econ. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a crazy space. I feel, yeah, I feel like I've definitely filtered, like you meet so many new people, and then like right now, every single person I know who I speak to on a regular basis is either e-com property or some sort of like just something well it's just pe- people that think for themselves um, <laughs> that's like a tongue in cheek term civilian right like you've probably heard it like yeah. normies is what Tay would say <laughs> yeah, I, I hate that Zach term said that but it's, it's tongue in cheek to clarify but the point is I think 
people that can just think for themselves outside of the socially accepted norms are not that and are entrepreneurs the UK is the worst for it man yeah UK is so and it's not even about it. money like, I really respect people that anything, I don't know anything like if you want to fucking live in an igloo because that's what you want to do and you just, you just that's the same principle it's just thinking for yourself yeah. and not believing everything the fucking news tells you and all this shit like yeah. it's wild to me how how much correlation there is between like entrepreneurs and views on certain world events over the past few years. For sure, yeah. It's just wild that. to me. It's like, it's obvious. They, have, they think for themselves, so they don't agree with everything. It's just logical they thinking. They don't, so they agree with everything. Logical thinking. So, logical yeah. Thinking. I don't think you can teach that. You either just, I don't know. I think people are just wired a certain way. Yeah, but it's that sheep mentality. Because I, I can't, like, understand it either. Because I've always been, been that way. Of, like, I don't, well, I'm I don't a great example. Like, I've got a twin brother. Okay, not yeah. identical twin brother but born in the same, same parents same upbringing yeah, but, but is he happy and he's it, probably happier than me and that's the problem of being um, probably yeah I think it's not a very happy endeavour in entrepreneurialism okay but you because most people that do it think too of, much instead of saying he's happier he could potentially be he's more I just, level I couldn't do level. what he's doing though no but he's more level yeah so. he's always been steady two degrees a job steady girlfriend bought a house so for me like I'm just a loose I, cunt I think of it like this I don't understand why you'd have a job paying you two grand a month. You could get one client doing some sort of agency job that pays you two grand a month and you work one day a week. It just doesn't make sense in my head. But, not, but you have to also understand 99% of people don't think like that. And if they did, the world wouldn't work. Facts, of course. Because not everyone can own an agency. Or not everyone can Nor should they. Them. Also, most people that run an agency shouldn't run an agency. Like, completely <laughs> Just because certain YouTuber completely told completely you to. Agree. Completely Doesn't agree. mean you're good at it. The short form um, pandemic is yeah, crazy. It's very true. The agency pandemic. It's so, it's, it's so crazy. I think, yeah, Eman's absolutely smashed that though. Like, absolutely smashed Yeah, that. I don't just mean Eman. I mean, yeah, he's done amazing with that. But, you know, just, I think, yeah, the agency pandemic is a thing. Okay, so I'm in the situation of, like, traveling. I've been in Bali for, like, two years, on and off, Dubai, whatever. Hmm. Obviously, I debate, oh, I miss England. I want to see the boys. They're back home. What's going on? And then I forget sometimes I'm actually progressing here. What was the factor that was like, right, I need to go home, get a base? Because I haven't got a base. I move every two to three months. I'm, I'm still debating it myself. Um, I did the full nomad thing for like three years where my base was my parents' house, technically. I was just never there. I like, came back like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, a few weeks every year. Like, um, I then got a base in London like four years ago, which is more expensive because you're paying for two places. But I just wanted to have my own place. <laughs> That was the yeah, main thing. I don't want to fucking live with my parents. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, and I guess, yeah, London has been my base. I think it probably always will be to some extent. I might not say that in a year, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, I, obviously through COVID, I still travel through COVID. Um, I still travel a lot. Like I said, like yeah, I don't do travel. travel. I, I just, I just, I in winter, I've done more blocks not traveling. Like I did September to December, I didn't move. I was in London, three months. Did the same. I was in Bali for New Year then came out here after three months so then in summer I'm usually somewhere every month I don't know I'm still trying to figure it out I'm still trying to figure it out I think having a base is important to some extent but that could be in Bali it doesn't have to be in London or England or fucking anywhere in Europe yeah I'm thinking Dubai Bali UK like Dubai is like the winter yeah like if I had to name four for me it'd be London Marbella Dubai Bali yeah we're gonna go I wanna go Marbella in the summer yeah I'm gonna go affiliate world with Barcelona but definitely something about Marbella I just just like it I like the fucking lifestyle I've never been Never been. Never been. I got sick of there last year. I lived there as well for Bro, two I went months. to Dubai and everyone's like, Yeah, yeah it's very cozy. Marbella driving the Porsches in Europe for some I was like, I'm I'm game. I'm fucking game, bro. So I want to go to Marbella. C- can you get work done while you're traveling? Or is it like too distraction? I think I think you gotta be somewhere for like at least a month to properly lock in. I think set, set I think it's a skill set to get what you need to get done while traveling, as in going somewhere for a week, being in like an Airbnb in Dubai, like I was for a week. I mean, here I'm here for two and a half weeks, but it's just it's your duty as a fucking owner of a business to get what needs to get done done. I mean, now I have a much better team than I used to have, particularly in like the past few months, even more than ever. Like I have a proper team. I have a managing director now of the business who's like 35, way more experienced than me that's taken a lot of weight off my shoulders definitely in terms of time because a lot of stuff is all automated now um, but yeah I think it's, all, it's getting the balance right because it's very tempting at least I think particularly in Bali probably more than anywhere else to just go and fucking send it oh, man, I'm boring bro I like, I like yeah. early nights get up early go gym well you got like, a girlfriend 
this is that's that, that, that does make a big yeah, difference the new, new boys are still chilling that makes a huge difference massive difference I've got no motivation to go out if I'm not it's single true. this is very true this is very true uh, not no motivation but let's be honest it's definitely more motivating there's a lot of nice girls in Bali well I wouldn't be staying up late I'd be like oh, I'm going to bed getting up early exactly yeah so I think not drinking and partying is the is the biggest variable in like pro- productivity anywhere because like if you really send it the next day is gone yeah, I, I would so that might be fine, but a couple of drinks. I would say, let's say a night. I week. can't do a couple of drinks. I think I've got a mild problem. Can. I think you I've got a mild it. problem. Nah, I'm like, I can have one or two, chill. To be fair, I had a bottle of wine last night on the pod, and that was fine. Then we had a few Moscow mules afterwards at the lawn. Big, big fan of Moscow mules. Yeah, big fan. All the boys on the mules. Yeah, they're yeah. really good, really good. So, what's um, obviously been traveling a bit. Like, what's what's your plan for Bali at the moment? Just chilling, cruising. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just kind of working in. And meeting people here, doing a few pods. I was going to be here anyway with my Aussie mates that I said, like in a villa next week. So I just filled the interim 10 days after I was in Dubai. I was like, I'm already halfway here. We're here in June. Come move in June if you want. I think. China yeah, it's just such a long flight, isn't it? That's the thing it's with crazy, Europe. Though. That's why Europe is so appealing. It's a two hour flight to Marbella, one hour time difference. I'm not even sure there is a time You've difference. Even Lisbon? Yes, that's also good? sick. I think Marbella is better for summer. Lisbon, I would go more like spring. Or autumn. Yeah, I'm excited for my bed to be there. Get a little car. You like Marbella more than Barcelona? Yeah, I reckon. Why? I lived in Barcelona for three months when I was 22. I Still can't speak Spanish. Same. <laughs> actually, actually, maybe not. Mm, I think Marbella could be more productive. As in, the sick gyms there. It's like a cool outdoor-y lifestyle. Yeah, I know what that one. I don't know. Like, Barcelona, very busy, very distracting, I think. It's more like yeah, London. It's more like city, London. It's very loud. Whereas Marbella is obviously like beach vibes. Kind of like your hometown. You yeah. have a car there, you can cruise around. Yeah. That's true, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like Spain in general. Yeah, I heard that. Um, Ibiza as well, all like, those guys. Like Lisbon's popping off for like digital nomads and stuff. Yeah, it's become like the next place. I think there's some like digital nomad visa or some bullshit as well. Okay, so. I hate the term digital nomad. Oh, bro, I hate it. I think it, it's like man. the ultimate insult. Right, it. it's terrible. It's like you're some peasant that can't afford to live in England. Another which generally, that is the case. Really? For, for a lot of like. Digital you're nomad. like a pure nomad that works like two hours oh, a day freelancing. Yeah, it's like you're like backpacking and working on yeah, like, that's like, what I mean. Yeah, freelancing. Yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah, I don't like that. And the other term I hate, solopreneur. Hate it. Because yeah. I don't think you should advertise working alone, hmm. in my opinion. Like, but you're not solo for now. If you've got any team members, you're not solo for now. Yeah, but in this day and age, you work at a laptop and a home. I'd say that's pretty solo, even though you are calling people. That's why I like putting... Like, uh, yeah, I'm constantly torn between, do I want an office with 50 people eventually? No. Or actually, is, it, is that all just archaic, pre-COVID, and now the modern way of working is build a team, build systems, automations... Like represent? Would you want someone like that? They've got a big offer. Yeah, it's a great example, like Gymshark or whatever. Yeah. Would you want that? A bit of me does. I then this other part of me thinks, fuck that. Because I know if I'm having a bad day, I don't want to walk, walk into the office and say hello to everyone. If there's 50 people that are like counting on you to like be it's in It's funny because uh, I know I, I know examples of both that have worked to like a really big scale. I think you just have to <laughs> figure out what works. Maybe maybe a hybrid is ideal. We have like a small office as a base. You're not there all the time. Team can be there. I like, so what I would get, if I was to move back to the UK, I'd get like a warehouse, and then all your boys, let's say your group, you'd have a warehouse, and you'd each have your own, you'd all just work in there mm. together, and you would have a section where you've got your really own businesses. Cool. That's sick, because mm. you all park the Porsches outside, bowl up. Yeah, I, I that, nearly that did that though, with a few mates before, and I'm glad they didn't, because it would never have worked in hindsight. It's a nice idea, but mixing, like the, if there were team members there and shit, mixing businesses would never work. True. Like if you want to get to scale. It would just be weird. True. Very true. Very but true. as a lifestyle thing, like living in a it, it house. would be more like this, Will, like having four tables for ecom guys working yeah. with each other, you know, kind of like a mastermind, not like yeah, having yeah. new employees. So that would be yeah. weird. Well, man. I've always lived in places with like two other entrepreneurs, yeah. like hustle house, whatever the fuck you want to call best, it. It's the best, man. It's the best setup because I couldn't live with anyone else, right? Because yeah. you yeah. just wouldn't be on the same page. Agree, agree. But this is the other thing, though. Like we go to dinners all the time, mm. and everyone does ecom. There's only so much you can speak about. Um, speak about other shit then. Bro, but the people don't. There's a lot of these... Yeah, because guys. a lot of them are fucking nerds, bro. That's yeah, why. Bro, they have nothing actually, else to speak about. Actually, he's actually. looking over here. Is he yeah, one? Yeah, Egan, Egan's a fucking geek, man. Oh, geek, man. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he's, um, he's a young buck, bro. He's like 14 or something. Yeah, 14. <laughs> <laughs> get a little vodka, You're scaling or no? Yeah, he's scaling. He's scaling got a digital off. product niche, bro. Digital products? Yeah. What, like, info product space? Gaming. 
<laughs> cut that out. He's a, he's, a, he's a gaming geek, but it's good. It's going well. It's going That's well. cool. I like people that don't sell physical products. Bro, it's sick. It hasn't, it you a guru or no? He's not guru, no. Even oh, better. But we, we met um, through me being a guru on TikTok. Yeah, same time I met you, actually. Ultimately, selling info is the most profitable niche in the world. And it's a brings, fact. And that brings me back to the question. What is the strategy? Obviously, you choose a passion. You like creating, but obviously you can monetize it as well. I really should long, monetize it more. <laughs> long, don't you fuck. Long term, like, what's, what's your plan with it? What would your ideal goal be? Well, it's funny because I was also, I'm, I'm sound like I'm licking my own ass, but like, I was doing YouTube when I was 17, right? So I was actually into it. I'm not just, I didn't just start a podcast because yeah, every yeah. fucking other person started a podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to make music videos, like covering One Direction and shit. Still online, go search it. I also deleted one of them because someone said I was shit at school because you shouldn't care what people think because no one's ever hated on someone doing worse than them right true right is that the right way around oh, I don't know yeah mm-hmm. exactly no one's ever hated on someone doing better uh, yeah you get, yeah, you get yeah, the yeah, point you get the point um, you never met a hater doing better than you yeah something like that so I had that and then I had I had like a vlog channel which is linked in all my current videos like four years ago I've got about 150 videos of me just fucking travelling around Europe by myself and shit I didn't like Singapore and shit I'm kind of glad I did it I've got no views it's memories Exactly, it's just a digital time capsule. Literally. And then, yeah, I, I don't know why I stopped doing that. I think I went through a phase of trying to look cool, like posing with my fucking cars on Instagram and shit. And then I realised, <laughs> and I think a lot of people are so scared of what they look like. But then, at the end of the day, people are going to realise the real, the real you anyway, when they fucking yeah, meet close, you. Like, like, that girl's going to realise what you're actually like yeah, after like sure. one day. Instagram's a fake. And I know so many people, probably me included, that portray this image, naming no names, but I've got specific examples in my head. They look a certain way, and then you meet them, and they're just not that. Like for no, better or worse. There's so many people like that. On like some I've met, and they're actually really nice. I thought they were a cunt. Some they like pretend to be this hard ass, and actually they're crying about an ex-girlfriend when you meet them. So everyone <laughs> is actually just. It's very like, true. Yeah, everyone's less cool in real life, or it's, like more real, in, more normal in real life than you'd think. I don't know. Um, where was it going? I'll say you're pretty similar to to YouTube online. I'd say very. Yeah, similar. I, I wanted to be a YouTuber when I was 17. 100 million percent. I used to yeah. watch like Zoella and fucking Casperly and all that shit. I think I remember Zoella. Like, I just did. And then. Oh, Casper, is he UK? UK? Casperly? Yeah. Yeah. And then I suppose, yeah, I don't know. It felt like an opportunity it's when, crazy, when I fucked up that business. That was the first pod I ever did. Speaking about that. Who was the first pod member? It was me. It was my mate interviewing me about what oh, happened. Oh, fuck. Yeah, yeah, I remember actually. And I was so scared shitless to put that out because I was like, fuck, people are going to call me a scammer or this bullshit. But everyone was like, wow, that's the most honest thing I've literally ever seen. And it went like, not viral, but like... In the space, we'd say. Like 15,000 views on a fucking video of me sat, you know, just at a table, like. And I had no subscribers either. So I feel like obviously YouTube, people picked it up and YouTube. they were like, oh, fuck. And then, then I was like, oh, I don't know. I quite enjoy speaking on pods. I think I'm quite good at it. So then I started getting all my mates on. It became this little thing. Then I started doing it every week. It's good. It's good fun. It's I great. Know, it's still very people. much a side project like I have an editor now I've got a girl that books all the stuff and arranges it that's good I really should monetize it more though so I'm starting to do these events as well um, which is pretty good so I've got one on the 5th of May we did two like last month because so many people message me saying do like a, a, an event or something like, and it'll probably become like maybe a mastermind or something like that I don't know but I've got I mates think- that have done crazy things like masterminds like Tyler Newman is doing this property mastermind in Dubai like half a million quid over yeah, three days crazy. and it's like 20 seats at 25k each and I was like hold on and he's like you should do that maybe at a slightly lower level because I feel all the yeah, property yeah. guys are older and have more cash for sure for but sure. yeah I don't know I think I never intended to have a personal brand at all literally ever but, but you like I think it's net beneficial to, to have people know who you are in 2023 but do you think document the journey of your brand is net beneficial that's because, debatable because obviously I was having a look in yeah I definitely I know for a fact there's competitors there's people watching this podcast or at least mine maybe yours as well for sure for that sure. have ripped me off because of that for sure and I know their names and they won't do very well yeah because like example per and country. if they do do well I'll fucking I'll call my well, crypto boys well, and no, delete no, them no, it's, it's <laughs> per country I would say UK specifically you can only have a certain amount of big, big companies in the space like only Bro, it's quite a small market, yeah. yeah UK Especially with founders. I reckon there's like a few hundred people running brands, yeah. like to a decent level. Maybe not even that. Nah, UK's tiny. Man. Maybe, probably a few hundred, if I had to guess. I don't know. Yeah. Like doing seven figures plus for the brand. 
I'm not sure, man. They're they like, no. even in Germany, we have like 80 million people living there. So it's about the same as the UK. They're like stores you would never think they put like big numbers and do like a mil per month. Yeah, but Germany, Germany's a different type of people, man. Why? Because the what? UK, as in you think there's way more that are underground and hidden in the UK? How many people? Bro, I would UK? say I can like name seventy million. Seventy million I would say There's also a lot of money flowing, so there are a bunch of stores that you wouldn't think make a lot of revenue, but they they do well. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think Germany's different, man. Bro, I know stores that have like 1,000 followers on Instagram. And they run it and they Google do Ads. like six figures yeah. at least, you know? Yeah. I guess. And there's a lot of people advertising dropshipping e com There are a lot of shit brands. Yeah. Yeah. That, that can't run ads, so can't be profitable mm. on the front end. They have like three ads running with retargeting. Like proper brands that have like 50 ads running in the ad library, they're not, not many. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty niche. But I feel like all the all these um, all the gurus and stuff, it makes it seem so easy. And I feel like most people when they start, they get into the first problem and they'll quit. So I feel like that keeps some sort of barrier to like entry to market. It's a rare case that you see somebody winning within like the first year. You really? have so many issues like banned like accounts, restricted pit, <laughs> pictures. I honestly, I'm like, and I know this for a fact as well, naming no names. There's so much smoke and mirrors on Twitter. Now Twitter's become the new Instagram. It used to be forex gurus and. Dropshipping gurus. I'm a big fan of Twitter, though, man. Sick. Yeah, no, Twitter is good, but almost everyone is lying. Like, literally, almost everyone. Do you reckon, though? Cause yeah. I couldn't fucking, like. Lie. I know for a fact that a lot, a few of them are. Like, actually lying? Yeah, like they're posting receipts of clubs Fake shit. when they didn't even pay. So like, I, that's just wrong. It's yeah. also really cringe because. It's cringe as fuck. Also, no, this is another thing. Rich people don't post about how rich they are. No, they don't. Yeah. If you're posting about how rich you are, you're not rich. Yeah. And it's I also just agree. really crass and yeah. not like the done thing. You have no class. Do you know I've what I mean? Like, yeah, You're I've posting about your action. People will literally post Stripe screenshots. Nah, nah. So it I've, is I've beyond. Done, I've done Shopify. Cr- cringe. But what I've seen is uh, bank transfers. So it's just shocking. Yeah. Like Don's needs it obviously won't raise very well. Like you, you don't do that. Do you know what I mean? I think. I think. What it comes That's my down view. To, I think what it comes down to most is when you're first doing well. I would say, when, so there's two options. Either you've made this money quick and it's like, fuck, this is sick, man, I want to show everyone, or you're faking it. I think there's two options to it. I've done the screenshots when I was younger, definitely. For sure, for to be sure. Fair. But I think the other thing as well is, so I've got investors now that have built literally billion dollar companies. So one of them's Wayflyer. So the founder of that, big fintech, uh, let's all the Or the investor one. Yeah. Wayflyer. So, oh, yeah, yeah. And another guy that sold a business for nine figures to Adobe. Like, That's good. There's levels to this shit, and they would never, oh, mate, ever, sure, ever sure. post about their wealth on Instagram. They won't even use Instagram. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, all these people that are put in this, I don't know, they are just gurus. They're selling the dream. And you have to realize yeah, well, there's actually, I would say, their Twitter's, lifestyle is paid by the fact that you're, you think that their lifestyle is paid by the thing they're selling you, and it's not. There's a couple YouTube guys that I know. There's that, a lot of YouTube guys. Oh, no, mate. Most I, of them. Actually, bro, I worked for some, like, it's so many, it's so terrible, isn't it? It, I'm not, I'm not saying thing. necessarily it's like wrong I'm just saying you have to be aware of For sure. the reality around but it because the a lot of courses and stuff can teach a lot of people I've got a fucking course I'm just not a guru because the difference is I'm actually doing what I fucking talk about I also don't even promote exactly. it exactly. exactly I'm not flexing Lambos either but, no courses can help I completely agree with that I've bought a course before so I'm not shitting on courses I'm just saying the element of selling a dream and being disingenuous about it that's the problem I'm not For selling sure. info info but can be great most gurus that get into the space let's say they start a drop shipping store they start a TikTok organic do like 20k in sales 100k in sales then it dies can't do it again they release a course after then they release a course and then start making absolute ched yeah. and they've never even hired a team trained a team built systems that's where it's no wrong SOPs, yeah. no SOPs no fulfillment yeah. like do you, if you're running a brand for I would say two to three years if you get the past a two year mark I would say yeah you can do e-com because there's so many fucking problems yeah you know? like I even mean, with the iOS 14 bro like you, can t- you, you don't have to name this guy, but basically they, they don't have success with dropshipping or make like small numbers. Mm. Then they drop a course, make money with that, and then basically flex, flex that money. Mm. They basically teach you like yeah, such yeah. a simple idea of e-com. Just test 20 products, shitty products from AliExpress, and then it will blow up with $500 spent or something but like that. But in their defense, yeah. a shitty course could still get someone successful because as long as the basic steps are on it, like, as long as you're smart enough, you'll figure it out. In my opinion, is that as well, like, Let's say 100 people buy a course, mate. Only two two people are gonna do okay from it. In realist, that's not down to the course. Mm. That's down to the individual. Like, there's only so yeah, much you is. can tell someone. I also think that just like no one thinks long term, and I think it takes a bit really? of life experience. 
to, to actually start to think long term. I've only started to think long term in the past two years, probably even mm. year. Everyone wants to be retired by 25 or whatever the fucking buzzword is. But then look at the actual like, admirable businesses or not even just e-com. Like, you're in the game for like 10 plus years at least. And, and that's why I was debating whether to, to sell mine. Because my niche, home decor... Yeah, but heart's not in it for a start. So I mean, that's the main okay. problem. And then, so do you, do you, you can't my... do something long term unless your heart's in it because you will quit or you'll just give up or you'll just... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. That's like... We'll say seven of those right now. Yeah. But yeah, thank you for that. But yeah, I actually got into e-com to like, the dream was like to fucking, the idea is to be going down the Amazon rainforest or something with my girlfriend, like trying to buy land to like replant the forest. That's like the end goal, bro. You like, can do that now, can't you? Yeah, you could probably do it in Bali to an yeah. extent, yeah. But I want to get to a point where I've got like loads of properties, paying for myself, no risk, all that, you know. Mm. That's like the end goal. So I know we talk about space goods are like the long-term goal. We if also you, just paused the fucking pod because yeah. he, he quit the pod and I said, hold on, teach you a lesson in podcastering. He was. Yeah. And we I, started again. I gauged Matt wrong. I thought he was finished and he didn't want to talk anymore, but I gauged it wrong. Well, we could go for three hours. That's the problem, especially when the red wine comes out. Yeah, but for sure. For sure. Got so to be, apparently. if you could get like the ideal end situation in your 40s or 50s, how would you want space goods to look? Ideal. Well, when I'm 50? 40 to well, 50. Hopefully I'm not involved. <laughs> So you, That'd be a long time. So you'd want to be out by that point? In 23 years, I hope so. Fair. Yeah, fucking hell out. We'll be out in like five years. Oh, fair. So that's five years is long term. Well, I, I think I could definitely work in the mushroom and psychedelic space to some extent forever. But I think when you, especially, yeah, when you build a brand, I think five years tops to like exit from it, ideally. Okay. So, so what would be the game plan? Like, let's say you did get the exit, like the dream exit. What would be the plan after that? I reckon I'll start a fund called Pool Party Social Fund or some bullshit. Oh no, Pool Party Capital. I've already got the dot com. Yeah, I saw that. I've already spoke about this with my mates. We're going to yeah, start a fund. So We're going to scale it to like fucking BlackRock levels or some shit. Blackstone. So, Sun, so what called. would you be funding like? Brands, founders, all that sort of shit. I reckon. That would be pretty I reckon that'd be cool. Brand. You just want to get further and further out of the trenches. You've got to serve your time in the trenches. I, I think gonna, I've served a long time in the trenches. I was going to say that. I feel like you've the word trenches, I feel like that's, you, that's definitely came from you and that's in the Twitter space now. Because a lot of people I'd say, they, they use that. I don't know where that came from, but yeah, I definitely. What's your definition of the trenches? I mean, a lot of people reply to like pictures of desk setups, I've noticed this now. I'd be like, that's not the trenches, you're in a first world country. Yeah, it's like, it's sarcastic. People don't have a fucking sense of humor. It's obviously comparing it to World War II, that's why it's a trench. But I guess just fucking working all the time. Yeah. It's really trenches. Um, yeah. the mo- the modern stereotypically trenches. in a dimly lit room yeah. with poor hygiene or some, sh- some yeah. shit. That's classic. where it comes from, right? Classic, classic. But yeah, it's just when you're really fucking getting after it and not doing much else, which everyone has to go through at a certain point, e- even, even now. What, what do you... Um, I want to find out because I've just started doing like... Well, just started doing like the running. Obviously, it's mm. a harder game to get into than I thought. Like I tried a 5K the other day. What's your time? Oh, bro, slow. No. Like plus 25? No, what's my time? It's like, like what you say my time is five shit. kilometers. I would say like six and a half minutes per kilometer. Yeah, it's pretty slow. Fucking slow. Yeah, that's very slow. I was slow. looking on Strava. Before. What's that, like half an hour? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was looking on Strava. Were you trying? I was trying. You running or walking? Like actually running. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll, do a, we'll do a 5k here next week. Yeah. The track up here is like 5k. Yeah. All right, I'll be down for that. I'm not in my best shape at the minute, but i probably still go 18 minutes or something. So what was 18 the- minutes? Yeah, bro, he's quick. He's really quick. I well, like, I'm a big guy, so I'm not the quickest, but I'm quick for my, my size. Mate, my I would time say would be 25. Quick, but how fast are you doing a 10K? No. And my best 10K last year was 35 minutes. That's, that's, ridic- that's, that's, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's ridiculous. So what's the preparation in that? Well, yeah, so I, I, I used to be a rower, right? So I, I know how to train hard. I used to be elite level of fitness. I wanted to go to the Olympics and shit. I was never that level, but like, I wanted to, in the future, progress to that. But then I got into entrepreneurship. And then I just... Started doing what everyone does, just bro lifting, like you fucking go to the gym. No one does cardio. Bro lifting. It just is what it is. I had a good base, like training wise. Yeah. And then I found myself after I broke up my ex girlfriend, just like fat. I wasn't actually that fat. I was like two stone heavier than I am now, yeah, but project. yeah, it just didn't look great. I was like, fuck this. Um, <laughs> and then I discovered running, and like I always thought I would be a shit runner. And it's funny because I was the worst runner in my group of friends who aren't runners, but like would go running now and then. I remember doing a 10K and not being able to finish it. 
I was like, fuck this. So I just started doing it three times a week, then five times a week, then six times a week, then every day. And I was like, fuck it, I'm getting quite quick now. And then literally between like February last year to June 22 to last year, I got in the best shape I've ever been in. Like, <laughs> I look like a fucking fitness model. I thought I could absolutely die. So people were like, are you taking some shit? I was like, nah, it's just running, eating clean, training hard, sunbathing. How do you stay patient running? Because that's my biggest problem, like patience. I think running and fitness in general, you start to enjoy more when you get fitter because then it becomes like less painful and more like pro progressive. I don't okay, know. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like for people that are like 10 stone overweight, which I've never been, I, I imagine the first stone is the hardest to lose, right? Sure, it's like sure. the same with anything. It's like momentum. Um, but yeah, I, I just got into running and then started doing these quick times. And then I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do go for a sub three hour marathon, which everyone told me is like really fucking hard, especially at my size. So I'm like 88 kilo, six foot three. Pretty lean. And I said, all right, 88, six foot three. Yeah, I said, I've never done a marathon. I'll try and do a sub three. And the internet says that's like elite, impossible, my size. So I'd never done one, ended up running as 252. And I was like, all right, I'm pretty fucking quick. Right. I mean, I was running like 100K a week. So the height helps. Not, well, some people would say that, but then weight doesn't help. So yeah. kind of pros and cons. So so what, look at Kipchoge, right? Okay. World's fastest man. He's like 55 kilo, five okay. foot six. What's the so, mental process? Like, what are you thinking about when you're running? David Goggins. I read yeah. Can't Hurt Me, and I, I love that shit. I reckon I'll do, I'm doing an ultra marathon in summer, but it's like a, gr a group one. So, so it's 24 hours non -stop. I've never read David Goggins. You should read that. I think it's the best book I've ever read. What's about? David Goggins, Can't Hurt Me. Do you know David Goggins at all? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so it was basically his story and how he like transformed himself from a, a fat little bitch into the hardest man alive. But in my opinion, like, I saw him and I was like, it's, isn't that too much? Like you don't need to live your life in that like. Yeah, I think game. it probably is, but I relate to what a lot of what he said about like, he just, the only way to like, I don't know, deal with his past or whatever was by like pushing his body to a ridiculous level. Obviously I've never done to that extent by any means, but yeah, right. the principles of what he was preaching, I related to a lot. At the end of the book, did he solve the pain? I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Um, Cause he seems intense, bro. Like super intense. I think there's a time and a place for that. I think, I don't know, like, especially as a, as a guy, as a man, I think you have to be able to fucking, I think, I think that running and shit and like physical endurance events, it's offline, right? That's why I like it so much because you're proving yourself in like basic raw human endeavor rather than just on a fucking screen. So at the end of the day, if a fucking lion start running after you, yeah. <laughs> which ain't gonna happen, Good but are you like fit enough to escape? It's like, in, that's, in Java. I don't know. I just like the rawness of it. And then I got into like CrossFit and shit and I still do a lot of weight training and stuff, but particularly running, I, I just don't know. I just liked it. Have you tried uh, like boxing, Muay Thai? Done a bit of boxing. What I know Twitter obsessed with that shit. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone funny, has to do the same as everyone else. But I, yeah, I mean, that's incredibly hard. Boxing is like one of the sports that looks easy, but it's so hard. Super hard. Yeah. I trained for like a year last year. Really? Got, had a fight, got beat I, up. I've trained in Bali before. I like, got classes yeah. and shit. Yeah. Trained, got beaten up. Mm. which is not fun it's kind of I just want to get my actually. nose broken do you know what I mean it's a bit I just don't of a pussy thing to it. say but nah, like, I don't really fancy getting like brain damage agree, agree honestly like, like my brain's worth too much to me completely agree is that eight, hand check number eight, eight. Hand but I completely agree bro because like why would you want to wake up in the morning and fucking get punched in the face like genuinely I know every, like genuinely mm. I don't know why everyone everyone's preaching on Twitter like you must fight you must fight yeah train but, I've like, never actually been in a fight Neither, not really. Which is probably the sensible way to go because I've always thought like getting in a fight is actually so stupid because you stupid could punch fight. someone, stupid. they fall over, hit their head and you go to prison for 10 years. It's not worth it. It's not even that, just like getting, imagine being on a street fight. Have you seen the Twitter fights? Mm. Mental, just absolutely getting yeah. dead. <laughs> it's just not worth it. Like I've always been that guy, you just want to chill. Like if something's been happening, just chill, unless you have to, like unless you're getting attacked. Yeah, I know. think it's a pretty low IQ move to like fight unless you really need to to be honest I'm not talking about like sports I mean like on the street or in a club or whatever it is completely agree but that's just my view completely agree how are you getting on how are you charming, charming into this I'm chilling man I'm chilling the new co-host yeah the new co-host Egan Top G is he your security or yeah he's my actually me and Egan we're best friends now are we best friends yeah, he's your chef then no yeah he's been is that what he's here yeah, whipping up the dishes man whipping up the dishes come on guys Nah, Egan, no Egan's, uh, Egan's a good lad. We met on, um, he booked a consultation and then um, 
he was uh, yeah, but... basically talking about digital products and then I was like you might as well come to Bali when you're 18 and just fucking ran it I which was pretty like I fucking wish I'd been in Bali surrounded by other people when I was 18 yeah, On, yeah honestly crazy I feel like an old yeah. man saying that huh yeah I was 17. only turned yeah, 18 a few weeks ago it's crazy man yeah bro and the YouTube organic game yeah it's market good. entirely for YouTube organic faceless YouTube channel that is very cool no ads well yeah the thought process was it was just kind of start a faceless YouTube channel and get AdSense started when I was 16 obviously then I saw like you need like 2k subs 4,000 watch hours so I kind of just launched a funnel Shopify didn't really know what I was doing didn't even know what dropshipping was at the time like went to sleep and made like 150 quid overnight at like a 98% margin and I was just like fucking what dropshipping? no no I'm digital on products YouTube. same store with oh, okay. YouTube mm. I'd say it's like dropshipping digital products though. So. Nah, because uh, I have like a team that makes them now. So yeah, they're made like in-house. It's pretty good. Yeah, I did like Wait, so you run YouTube Organic to sell dropshipping products? No, to sell digital products. What other digital products? Secret. Oh, mate, I'll show you, I'll show you the store You sell afterwards. your own yeah, my products? Own, my own, yeah. Okay. I'll show you the store it's afterwards. It's so niche. It's so niche. Yeah, it's so you're probably, like, it's really... How many subscribers has this space of channel got? Bro, it's got like, it's completely like, optimized for conversions. We've only got like 3K. But it's like not a massive market at all, but like the products, it converts really well. So it's good. That's crazy. I yeah, love the menu every day. I'll show cool. you after. Like, you might know what's yeah, funny. Essentially, it's got, it's got all the, basically all the problems with e-com. It hasn't got. And you can, you can do communities and stuff as well. Learn something new every day. Yes, yeah, so I've got yeah. like a I don't know Patreon. anything. I don't know about YouTube Organic. Yeah, not many people do it really, aside from like, I guess, courses and info products. But I was going to say, bro, when I was 16, I started the business. Bro, I remember I, I used to skip college. I was sat on the bus. Bro, I used to listen to your pod. Oh, really? Feeling like a bit of a fanboy here, but no, I remember, I remember listening to the, uh, the Neon Beach mm. story whilst just sat on the bus doing laps I should have charged for access college. to that. It's more valuable than a fucking NBA. Yeah, for sure. For yeah, sure. It's, it's pretty mad, pretty mad. Listen to a few. Yeah, what's crazy is the niche you're in, it's like the people are watching it like really in it. Mm. So it's like, yeah, I've been uh, wrecking that like six times in Bali. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, hold on, I've got 7,000 subs. Just calm down a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, but it's, it's a different niche. Like, the people mm. in the niche are properly into it, you know? They're not like yeah, anonymous. Sure. Bro, all my friends like back home love you. Like, fully love you, bro. Like, crazy. <laughs> we love your podcast. Really? Yeah, mm. which is a good thing. The problem is, my audience is 98% guys. <laughs> I'll be excited <laughs> when girls start approaching me uh, saying, I, I watch think, your pod. I don't think the girls will be watching it. Because I'd say e-com's pretty nerdy, let's be real. Like, if you're doing, like, all the laptop, laptop yeah. stuff. Like, even if you're not a nerd, it's p- still pretty nerdy. Mm, it is. That was actually one of the questions I wanted to ask, actually, is um, obviously being, like, an online entrepreneur, you don't go into the office, you're not meeting new people. The only way you can meet people is going out, etc. Like, h- how do you date? Instagram. Fair. <laughs> Honestly, and dating apps, obviously. Yeah, but how do they find you? <laughs> How do like they find Instagram, me? Yeah. No, I just I use like Hinge or Rye or something, okay. and then okay. Instagram funnel. Everything's a funnel. <laughs> Everything. It is though. Oh, like, get, it's so cringe. It's but every, don't get into this dating is the talk, ultimate funnel. Man. It's the actually it's the we, most comparable thing to e-commerce. We were having this whole conversation, I was and it's just table. true. It's like leads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's e-commerce. Add to cart. Maybe speak to him. <laughs> check so, out. It's all sales, isn't it? But like, it is all sales. We, they were talking about at the dinner. They, Bro, they're talking about like fucking. Um, let's imagine GAs, if you imagine like, if you ran Facebook ads in Indonesia with really low CPMs and it was just your your Tinder profile. And then you started then you had a VA, the and then they're like, yeah. oh mate, everyone, but they're being serious though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone and at the I tables, like, everyone at the tables cracking bro, up. Bro, I was coming, like, I was like, or you could just go speak to a guy in real life, and they're like, oh shit, like, <laughs> common sense. Who are these guys? Just e-com dudes, mm. bro. It's good banner though. It's good banner. Yeah. But we were saying that about optimising your Tinder profile. But he went for the less is more approach and that works really well. I do think it was harder for you because girls like older guys. That's just a fact. Oh, I mean, I've been cleaning nah, up. Bro, there's so many. With 14 year olds. <laughs> whoa, 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 nah, nah. How old are they? 19, 20, 21. Older than you. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Some nah, girls like fair, that. I'll give it. You got, actually, no, you just don't mind. You, you got chat, but you also don't mind rejection, which a lot of people don't have. Do you pretend you're older? Of, of course. course. Yeah, all right, fair when, enough. I say I'm 21. Yeah, like, fair enough. After a few drinks. No one's going to know I'm 18, really. That is true, especially when you live here. Yeah, I say I'm half Spanish. No, but on a more serious note, with the mm-hmm. dating and stuff, I actually think this generation's fucked. Because fucked, mate. Completely primarily wrong. because there's always another option, technically, because of Instagram and social media. Like, previously, you would meet a future wife, say, 
in your local town, right? Exactly. Like literally, that was how it started. Exactly. Like my parents yeah. met in a bar. I mean, you can still do that. But now, even if you're in a relationship, you can see and message any girl or any guy, whichever way, <coughs> anywhere in the world. Yeah. And we live in this culture of people working online, like even people that don't run a business, they're working from home half the time. People have forgotten how to speak to each other, including me to some extent, probably. Well, yeah, if you're sat at home working on your own in your mind, yeah, you're going to be like... But I was definitely you like that, bro. Because bro, I've been sitting in this room for two years. Just been in the trenches, games, as you should say, bro. <laughs> and he came to Bali, was like... I, I can't remember how to be social. I was like, fucking fair. Like, that's just what it nah, is. No, not, even, not yeah. even that. It's just a case of like, if, if you haven't done it for so long, like, it's just like... Yeah, but... I, I, so I do think having a good Instagram profile as a guy is, is the ultimate dating yeah. hack, though. It's just true, it's because everything there. funnels to the Instagram. And I'm the same with a girl. If I'm chatting to a girl, what's your Instagram? I want to verify like, what she looks like, that's basically. Why the, <laughs> that's, that's why the 10K mark is very important. If you've got 10K, yeah, it's I'm, a bonus. My it's followers flew up recently because I had Frankie Lee pod went like semi-viral, but I don't, I don't think, yeah, I think having a good feed. Sway drop should be coming through. Yeah. This is uh, Nico, by the way. <laughs> How's it going? How's it going? We'll um, head out in a little bit. Yeah. Grab a drink, bro. Yeah. Grab a little drink. Still recording? Yeah, yeah, still recording. How was the call, bro? Good? Yeah. Nice, nice. Austrian. Extreme drop. They're all shipper. fucking foreign, aren't they? Is he a no shipper or no? No, 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 no. Nah, he's serious. He's quite like. So basically, what it is now: Germans, Austrians, and Dutch. I swear, and fucking then market into those markets, right? Yeah, everyone. Yeah, you know, yeah. you know the drill. Mm. Absolutely, obviously, killing it. How they do? Bro, the amount of Germans is ridiculous. Bro, every everyone. Like, Everyone's German. It's, like. it's um the UK crowd so small. Yeah, there's there's Everyone's barely German. any UK guys for sure. Like, I've got like twenty mates, all German, Austrian, European. Yeah. Super cool. Even when I was in Dubai. All my mates, German, <coughs> European. I'm gonna scale in Germany now. Mate, Germany's a fucking great. G- Nico, Germany's a good market, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Like, the only thing is the like, chemical processing, I would say. But once you get, like, planner and all those things fixed, then it's definitely good, yeah. Bad return rate, though, if you've got shit products. Yeah. Got great products. Well, that's fine, though. Not a dirty dropshipper <laughs> anymore. Have you brought any space goods with you? No, I actually haven't. I was scared uh-huh. it would get. I actually miss it. I really want to try it. Yeah, we do. Might we I'll show you. I'll show you. What are you getting? Fucking um, male shit retailers. Oh, a bit, bit of ashwagandha. Yeah, we've got like this. Ashwagandha is great shit. It's in Rainbow Dust. There's this brand. Yeah. It's another like herbs brand, bro. It's like they brand another it. shit brand that looks yeah. like shit. No, I'm, I'm sure just saying. This is an Asian, Asian brand. Asian brand. They're, they're not. Does this work? Increases. Oh, bedroom endurance. We said boredom endurance. Yeah, yeah. Does it work? It, yeah, I would say it works. Maybe I should ask her. Does no, it work? Don't ask her. Don't ask her. <laughs> Does this work? The male the bedroom endurance. Does supplement. the male potency work? There you go. <clears throat> Thank you, girlfriend. Support. Good work. But they're good. They got like loads of different ones. They name it with like. I think that's pretty good to be fair. Where does the box start? start? They've started, bro, but it's on to like 10 or 11. You've been to Morabito before? Yeah, yeah. my favourite one. Some girl and buy me there later. Yeah, sweet. It's not, sweet. it's not actually that good, bro. Come on. I've Matt, been Matt, Matt would like it, I think. Been before. I think I've it's a really been. nice place, but it's, it's just, just a bit, it's a bit like, dead. Um, nah, nah, no, it's, it's a, a bit more upper class. Yeah, I'm that's not what you want, mate. Mm. Nah, to be fair, it's just got loads of older girls, so. Which is good. Yeah, it's like 30 plus. There's a lot of 30 plus in there. Right, yeah. I reckon um, I reckon we call it there and head to the fight. Really appreciate the chat. That was super good, and it's been really lovely meeting you. You're actually a really good guy, to be fair. No, I, I hope it. so. That's what most people would say. But yeah, man, it's good to have you on. I appreciate it. And we're gonna send it out to somewhere this evening and watch a fight. So we'll see how that goes. Peace, peace and love.